The Rosemont Area Arts Council was founded in 2007 as a result of a citizen task force that was appointed by the City Council to consider the repurposing of the St. Joseph's uh, Catholic Church, which the city had purchased. The preponderance of the team decided that the best repurposing would be an arts center, which could also provide multi-purpose meeting space for the community. It is now the Steeple Center. Local artist Stephanie Molstray Kotz indicated that not only did we need a building to be more creative Rosemont, but we also needed a group of people, an organization, that would lead, plan, and manage the arts in Rosemount. So she called for volunteers to create such an organization and people stepped forward. Stephanie Molster Kotz, John Locke, Beth Adams, and myself. And Rack was born in late 2007. From those early beginnings through today, Rack has lived its mission, building and strengthening our community through the arts. Since inception in 2007, the Rosemount Area Art Council has been an integral part of the city of Rosemount. They have provided a wide array of activities for our community, such as plays, concerts, and author writing events. Community-wide, they've put on several large programs, such as an art piece that required thousands of tiles for where residents had to paint a message for the community, and it now hangs in the library. Another one, the gratitude wall, required thousands of messages from individual citizens on what they were grateful in our community. All of their events bring our community together and by their existence, they make us a great place to live, work, and play. We sponsor about 50 events per year. They range from concerts such as bluegrass, tribute bands, and jazz. We also sponsor comedy clubs, various art festivals during the year, classes, and so much more. We also put on several theatrical events per year. The Front Porch Players is our community theater and it is open to everyone. The other theater group that we have is the Second Act Players, which is a 50 plus uh, senior adults uh, theater troupe. It's an interesting story about how we got started. It all happened back in 2015 and one of our members from RAC had read an article about benefits of seniors being involved in theater activities. How individuals involved in any aspect of the theater, whether it be behind the scenes or in front of the stage, what wonderful benefits they had. It dealt with their memory, it dealt with psychological, physiological, uh, cultural, and of course social. And so what we did is we applied for a grant and we were awarded the grant and thus began the Second Act Players. So we got started, we offer classes, we also have had field trips. This is even a trip to Chicago to see Hamilton. One other benefit from the Second Act Players is that we like to have fun. So if you're interested, come join us at Second Act Players. In the local newspaper, I saw these articles about classes uh, in acting for older adults, and I thought, well, I should try that. So I joined a class, and I found, gee, a friendly group of people, and some of them were newbies like me, and then others, they had been in the, in the plays in high school. We got along great, and pretty soon we were putting on funny plays for our friends and our family. You don't have to be on the stage to be, participate in theater. You can do things backstage like I did. You can be a stagehand, or you can sell concessions out front. One of the things on my bucket list was to be in a play. The only problem was, I had absolutely no acting experience whatsoever. And then I heard about the second act players of Rosemont, and I took a large variety of classes. They were taught by Charlotte Codner and Keith Reed, who are both very experienced in theater. I learned so much from them, and I became so much more confident being on the stage. I have really enjoyed being part of their productions and just being a member of the group. One of the important things about Second Act Players is we're trying to educate our people that are involved in the program. We've done that by providing a number of classes for them in costuming, makeup, 
and especially playwriting. Out of this came a number of different short plays that were written, one of which we will be performing for you today. We have also done a number of longer plays, full-length plays, that have been written mostly by our own membership. They've been wonderful to participate in and to watch, many of them containing a lot of humor. In 2017, I took a playwriting class sponsored by RAC. Uh, we were tasked with coming up with a play I named mine Karma. It happens to be a play that has four characters in it, but two of them are the main characters. And as they sit in this restaurant where they're going, waiting to be seated to eat, they get into sort of an intense discussion about their lives and what's going on. Not only am I the writer of the play, but I happen to be directing this version of it, and I'm also one of the actors. Hello, I have a reservation for three. The name is Brad Winning. Oh, your table's not quite ready, Mr. Winning. It shouldn't be too much longer. I'll call you as soon as it's ready. No problem. <laughs> Good evening. I have a table for two. The name is Karen Miller. I'm sorry, Ms. Miller, but I don't find a reservation under your name. My daughter made the reservation. It could be under her name, Margaret Smith. Hmm, I'm sorry, I don't find a reservation under that name either. I don't understand this. The reservation was made several days ago. Well, if you would like to wait, I can fit you and your party in as soon as there's a table available. Uh, please, have a seat, and I'll see what I can do. Damn, why doesn't she answer? She should have been here by now. Oh. Hi. Not having a good day? I beg your pardon? I said, not having a good day? No, I'm not. And if you don't mind, I don't wish to be bothered. Sorry, just making a little conversation, that's all. You know, you look very familiar. <laughs> I beg your pardon? I said, you look very familiar. Do you teach at the university by any chance? Yes, I do. I've been there for 30 years. I'm chairman of the English department. I thought so. I graduated from the university 15 years ago. Those were some tough times. I think I may have had you for a couple of my English classes. My name is Brad Winning, Ms. If I remember correctly, you're Miss Miller. Yeah, I had you for American Literature and Creative Writing. <laughs> Those are two classes I really wasn't interested in, but I had to take them anyway. You know, you were one tough teacher. You didn't give an inch when it came to any type of homework. So, did you pass my classes, Mr. Winning? <laughs> Barely. But back then, my focus wasn't quite on learning. Anyhow, I graduated. Well, I teach students who want to learn. <laughs> Obviously, you didn't. If I remember correctly, you came to class late quite often. Mm -hmm. You wore ripped jeans, had long hair, and a very surly attitude. The writing you turned in was substandard, boring, and simplistic in nature. You didn't have much of an imagination, I would say. I'm very surprised you graduated. <laughs> I didn't think you would amount to much, seeing as how you put so little effort into my classes. I thought you would have dropped out of college. But looking at you now, you seem to have fared slightly better. At least your hair is cut and your clothes are decent. What have you been doing since graduation? <laughs> well. Not much by your standards, I'm sure. You know, 
The one thing that stood out about you that I always remembered is you never really cared for your students. Yes, I was late a lot, but you never asked why. And I know you look down on me for having long hair and ripped jeans, but you never asked why. You didn't give a damn about your students, and I knew that. So I figured, <laughs> why even bother? As long as I was passing your classes, that was fine with me. But just so you know, my mother was a single mom going through chemo at the time. So I was pulling double shifts at work in addition to going to school to help out at home. Well, you could have said something. I did. But every time I tried to talk to you, you just turned around, walked away, and said you didn't have time for me. <laughs> Anyhow, I suppose I should thank you for the way you taught me. All of my other teachers were very helpful and accommodating, <laughs> but because of your attitude, I really found the incentive to make something of myself. So thank you. Mr. Winning, <laughs> your table should be ready shortly. Is the rest of your party here? Uh, not yet, but they should be here soon. Ms. Miller? I'm hoping that a table will open for your party shortly. This is totally unacceptable. All the times I have come and eaten here, this has never happened. I will be talking to your management <laughs> later. I'm very sorry, Ms. Miller. So, what have you been doing the past 15 years? <laughs> what type of job were you able to find after graduation? Oh, I've done all right for myself, I would say. I was working in construction while going to college, so I continued that for a while. Uh, but then I decided to go back to school and get my master's degree in social work. For the past 10 years, I've been working for the county. I really enjoy helping people with all the issues they face. It's a very taxing job with not much pay, but I love it. Oh, really? Huh. Yes. I really enjoy helping especially the young people to open up their eyes to new ideas and new possibilities. It's very challenging and yet very rewarding. I'm also a struggling author. I like to write stories that young people will read and so far all of my young clients have appreciated what I've written. I actually have a few short stories published and I'm currently working on a novel. <laughs> so you see, Despite what you said about my writing years ago, some people will actually read it. Well, there's no accounting for taste now, is there? I've also <laughs> met and married a wonderful woman who's the love of my life, and I'm really excited to start a family with her. She is fully supportive of all my endeavors. What about you? Do you have family? A daughter, a wonderful young woman, who has a fantastic job and will go far in life as long as she stays grounded and does not get into the wrong kind of relationship. And what exactly makes up the wrong relationship? The kind of relationship where the man takes over and the woman has no choice but to do what he wants. I've been in that kind of abusive relationship, and I swore that my daughter would not be in one. She has a good career and doesn't need a man. I keep telling her that. A woman can go far as long as she has a job to support herself, and she can do what she wants. Do you think all women need a man? <laughs> no, they don't. I keep telling my daughter that. I raised her to be strong and not need anyone to lean on. Well, uh, it sounds to me like you're bashing all men based on your own experience. My mother taught all of us to stand on our own two feet and to develop healthy relationships with the opposite sex. Uh, Thank God my wife is nothing like your daughter. She's a remarkable, loving woman who is confident, strong, independent, and supportive. I am so glad I found her. In fact, I'm meeting her here tonight for dinner, along with her mother. But I haven't met her mother yet. You're married and haven't met her mother? <laughs> Why ever not? Well, according to my wife, her mother is a very hard woman to warm up to. She's very judgmental and class conscious. 
She doesn't think her mother will approve of what I do for a living, especially since the pay isn't that great. But I know that once I meet her, <laughs> I can win her over. You know, maybe you should rethink your career choice. <laughs> it's just like a man to follow his dreams and drag his wife along whether she wants to go or not. Thankfully, my daughter would not fall for someone like you. <laughs> Mr. Winning, your table for three is ready now. Good. Maggie! Mother, I'm so glad you made it. Come meet my husband, Brad. What? what? My husband and I got involved in coming to Rosemont Area Art Council activities when we saw an ad in the local paper for a bluegrass festival during the summer. Um, we went and it was a fabulous time. We really enjoyed the music that was played. It was outside, it was a wonderful summer night and we have done that for many years. We also then started coming to some music programs here at the Steeple Center sponsored by them and we've invited friends to come along and they too have had a wonderful time. I also have been to a couple of plays here and it's been fun watching some people that are in the community and it was fun to watch and see how, what joy they brought in doing the programs for the people here. In our community we are very fortunate to have this council here. They really work hard to include art in our community and improve the quality of life here. In addition to performing at the Steeple Center in Rosemount, the second act players love to get out into the community. We perform a variety of shows designated like an old time radio show at senior residents and other venues. Our shows include celebrity interviews, singing, skits, commercials, and other comedy routines. Today we are presenting some samples of our shows. First, we have a fine group of stars here today who can't wait to entertain you. So let's start out with some juicy tidbits from a few of your favorite stars. To lead us through these interviews, please welcome the queen of Hollywood gossip, the one, the only, Hedda Hopper. Thank you all so much. It's lovely to be here. Our first guest today was an American actress and singer. She was known for her distinctive, powerful voice and leading roles in musical theater. She has been called the undisputed first lady of the musical comedy stage. Please welcome Ethel Merman. Honey, everything's coming up, roses and daffodils. Everything's coming up, roses for me and for you. Oh, that was wonderful, Ethel. You are truly a rose without any thorns. You always seem so confident. What's your secret? <laughs> I can never remember being afraid of any audience. If they were better, they'd be up here on stage, and I'd be up there watching them. Yes, you've given many wonderful performances, and your voice, it's so... Loud! It's so... Oh. oh, do you think crack the Liberty Bell? I was only hailing a taxi, but I was in Pittsburgh at the time. Yes, you definitely are powerful. But I also understand that you can be very emotional. Tell us about that. Christmas carols bring tears to my eyes. I also cry at weddings. To me, weddings are very solemn occasions. I should have cried at a couple of my own. <laughs> well, Ethel, is it true? You've been married and divorced. Four times? We all make mistakes. And that's why they put erasers on pencils. And that's what I did. I made a few Lulus. Now, I wouldn't trust any man as far as you can throw a piano. 
you're so talented and successful. Do you have any advice you want to share? Yes. First of all, always be yourself. It's the one thing you can do better than anyone else. And second, always give them the old fire, even if you feel like a squashed cake of ice. <laughs> That's good advice, Ethel. Thank you so much. It's been a pleasure. Our next guest is an American comedian who, with his dry humor, gravelly voice, and ever-present cigar, was popular for more than 70 years in vaudeville, radio, film, and television. Please welcome George Burns. I'm, uh, I'm very pleased to be here. Let's face it, at my age, I'm very pleased to be anywhere. <laughs> I get up in the morning, I read the obituary column. If my name's not there, I eat breakfast. <laughs> There's an old saying that life begins at 40. That is silly. Life begins every morning that you wake up. <laughs> well, George, some of us are very glad that you're here today. You always have your signature cigar in your hands. Why is that? I smoke about 10 to 15 cigars a day. Of course, it my age, I have to hold on to something. <laughs> it is a good prop for the stage, though. If I can't remember what I'm supposed to say, I can just keep on puffing till I remember my next line. <laughs> and when I tell a joke, I keep smoking until they stop laughing. And then when they stop, I pull the cigar out of my mouth and get on with my next joke. I think your cigars probably last a very long time. <laughs> what does your doctor say about smoking? If I had taken my doctor's advice when, when he had first advised me to stop smoking, I wouldn't have lived to go to his funeral. <laughs> George, at your age, you must have a few aches and pains. <clears throat> what do you recommend? The best painkiller is ice. It's not addictive, and it's really effective if you pour a little bit of whiskey <laughs> over it. You know, Hedda, it only takes me one drink to get drunk. Problem is, I don't know whether it's the 13th or the 14th. You're in your 90s now. Do you have anything that you could like to share about aging? <sighs> Retirement at 65 is ridiculous. When I was 65, I still had pimples. <laughs> when you age, first you forget names, and then you forget faces, and then you forget to pull your zipper up, <laughs> and finally, you forget to pull it down. You know you're getting old when you stoop over to tie your shoes and you wonder if there's something else you could do while you're down there. <laughs> well, George, how do you feel about dying? Other than on stage, that is. I don't believe in dying, which is why I've never died on stage. <laughs> it's been done. I'm working on a new exit. And anyway, I can't die now. I'm booked. We're glad that you made it to our show today, George. In closing, what is your key to happiness? Happiness. Happiness is having a large, loving, caring, close-knit family in another city. Southern pr 
persona that graced the grand old Opry stage for decades. Her quick-witted humor had her audiences bellowing with laughter. From Grinder Switch, Tennessee, please welcome cousin Minnie Pearl. <laughs> I'm just so proud to be here today with you fine folks and handsome fellers, too. How are you, Minnie? Oh, I'm just fine. Watch out for those fellers around here. Why, it ain't safe for a pretty girl. Well, I had one fella come up to me and tell me I look like a breath of spring. Well, he didn't use those words exactly. He said I look like the end of a hard winter. <gasps> How oh, awful! Don't let that get to you, Minnie. You are a very pretty girl. Why, well, thank you, Hedda. Well, I'm so glad you're here today. I tell you, it just ain't safe. Well, I had another feller come up to me just now and grab me and he kissed me. <gasps> a perfect stranger? Well, he wasn't perfect. But I can't afford to be choicey. Oh, well, now y'all are going to get the idea that all I think about is kissing. And you're right. <laughs> so the rumors are true, then. How is your family? Oh, they're just fine. My brother just got a new dog. He calls Careless. He got him for a hunting dog, and he could care less about hunting than any other dog he's ever seen. <laughs> well, that's too bad. You always have such interesting stories. You have one for us today? Oh, well, let me see. Oh, yes. There was a 75-year-old multi-millionaire man that married an 18-year-old beautiful young girl. His friend asked him, now, you're, how did you manage to get an 18-year-old girl to marry you when you're 75? He said, I told her I was nine to five years old. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder how long that marriage will last. Longer than she thinks. <laughs> oh, well, now I'm having a great time here. But you see, I got a date with my feller. We're going to go play checkers. Checkers? Well, you see, the way we play checkers is I kiss him and he kisses me, and I kiss him, and he kisses me, and I kiss him, and he Minnie, kisses me. Minnie, 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 who ever told you and your feller that was how you play checkers? Well, I did. Ain't I a dog? <laughs> Thank you, Minnie Pearl. <laughs> Big thank you to Hedda and these wonderful stars that took time out of their busy lives to entertain us. Our outreach shows include plenty of comedy, either as funny skits or stand-up routines. Today, Dennis Carney will offer some insight into his life as a loser. Well, we have a lot to worry about these days with all the virus and everything. I know I worry that I'm not paranoid enough. My finances are bad. I'm such a loser. My finances are getting bad. So bad I get pre-denied credit card applications in the mail. Yeah, my sleep number and my credit score are about the same thing. Things just don't, ne things just never go right for me. Last week I called the incontinence hotline. They asked me if I could hold. I said, that's sort of the reason why I'm calling in the first place. Yeah, then my twin brother forgot my birthday. <laughs> then there's this election, all these election ads. I can't watch the evening news because it's always election ads. I vote for him, vote for her, don't vote for him, don't vote for her, don't vote at all, don't. Already I'm suffering from electile dysfunction. <laughs> I'm gonna do my impression of Rodney Dangerfield. I tell you, I tell you, I get no respect, I tell you. I get no respect. Even when I was a baby, I got no respect. When I was born, a doctor took one look at me and slapped my mother. I'll tell you, my mother said she got morning sickness after I was born. I'll tell you, I get no respect. 
I get no, even as a teenager, I got no respect. There was a girl in school I really liked. One day she said, why don't you come over tonight? There'll be nobody home. Well, I went over there. There was nobody home. I'll tell you, I get no respect. My parents didn't love me. I knew that because my bathtub toys, they were a clock radio and a raccoon with rabies. I'll tell you, I get no respect. My wife didn't respect me either. We had 20 wonderful years. Yeah, then we met, I'll tell you. I get no respect. Thank you, you've been a wonderful audience. Singing is also a welcome part of the outreach show. Our next performer, Susan Friedlein, will be singing a song she wrote called A Little Bit Longer. Take it away, Susan. Met you on a summer's evening It was hot as a pepper And I was just leaving when you said hey So I decided to stay You seemed safe so I took a flyer Yeah, I let out some line Got a little bit higher Oh, I like it that way I think I'll stay Oh, I like it that way I'm gonna stay Just a little bit longer You know what they say Looks are deceiving Well, I gave you some time You gave me no reason to run away Yeah, I think I'll stay I'll stay Oh, I like it that way players usually perform their outreach show for seniors. Many of them are unable to attend our full productions at the Steeple Center. So we take a show to them. One particular audience member at one of our shows insisted that she was funnier than any of our acts. We invited her here today to let you be the judge. Please welcome Grandma Esther. Well, thank you so much for allowing me to come and present today. I, it's just, I want to talk today about getting old. You know, it's really hell to get old. I was visiting with my granddaughter. Oh, my granddaughter, she's so sweet. She took me to Disney World. Ha! And we had such a nice time and I had a really good chat. And she was asking me about life in the home that I'm in and I told her well you know it's it's okay I miss grandpa but but I actually have a few boyfriends in the home and she said really and I said yeah I every morning I wake up with Arthur itis during the day I spend time with Charlie of course in the evening I often will cuddle up with a little Jim beam or Jack Daniels. And every night, without fail, I go to bed with Ben. Gay. It's great. 
And my granddaughter just rolled her eyes. She said, Grandma, you should just forget about those guys. What you should do is look for a historian or an archaeologist. And I said, well, why, honey? And she said, think about it, Grandma. As you get older, they're going to find you more fascinating. <laughs> yeah, she might have a point. Yeah, old age is just not for sissies, you know. Time may be a great healer, but it's a lousy beautician. <laughs> I know, they say that life begins at 50 now. But by that time, everything starts to wear out, fall out, or spread out. I've got joints that creak louder than fireworks. Bunions the size of Paul. And hemorrhoids with their own zip code. But you know, there are a few good things about getting older, you know? Yeah, you get to go on more trips. Trips to the doctor, trips to the bathroom. As a matter of fact, just last week I had to go to the doctor for my semi-monthly checkup. And on the way I had to go to pee or not to pee. That is the question. The answer, of course, is depends. <laughs> so I get to the doctor. She gives me her whole big checkup and everything. And she says, well, you're not in too bad a shape, Grandma, for a woman your age. But of course, there's the but. She said, Grandma, you've got to start paying more attention to what you eat. You've got to cut out all that junk food. All those preservatives and chemicals are not good for you. You've got to eat healthy. I said, well, Doc, think about it. I need that junk food. At my age, I need all the preservatives I can get. <laughs> she rolled her eyes at that one. And then she said, but OK, well, what I need you to really do is watch that alcohol intake. You're drinking way too much, Grandma. And I said, I do watch my alcohol intake. I watch it all the way from the table to my lips. <laughs> yeah, I really enjoy my alcohol. I like to imbibe a little bit, especially wine. Oh, I love wine. Oh, hey, did you read that article in the Star Tribune the other day? You know, the one that talked about those vintners out in California somewhere, Napa Valley, I think it was. They're the ones that make the Pinot Grigio, Pinot Noir wines. Mm -hmm. They have come up with a brand new hybrid grape. And the wine they make from that grape is supposed to act as an anti-diuretic. They're going to market it to us seniors because it's going to reduce those trips to the bathroom. <laughs> I can't wait. <laughs> and you know what they're going to call it, of course. Pinot More. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. I had a great time being here today. Thank you, Grandma Esther. That was hilarious. The second act players should definitely consider adding you to their outreach show lineup. We hope that you enjoyed the sample of the second act players variety outreach show. So that's it. And we again, we invite you to come and join us. Have a great time. And the best of all to all of you from Rosemont.